Okay, let's do micro machine heads into the school into the construct to see if I can remember those three things. So, micro machine heads is a really interesting project. This is where I took my excuse me my Skynet robotic fleet, my robotic army, my robotic facility and turned it into actually the robotic facility actually came from my inventor's chair we'll see if i remember to get back to that but i took my robotic facility and made it smaller then I, then i got all the small robots to make even smaller robots and i got all the smaller robots to make even smaller robots and that's what we're doing we're creating a whole world of robots that are capable of making other robots and much smaller robots and we're just going down and down and down and down and down again. The reason why this is so significant is basically because robots cost a lot of money, but small robots don't. Small robots are cheap. It costs like materials, right? Especially when your robots are making the robots themselves, right? You're using full facilities, full automatic facilities or robotic facilities and you've already got all these processes outlined how to build all these types of things and how to um, fabricate and how to do tiling and how to build hammers and you got all these types of stuff that you can build now you can make small ones and build small hammers you build small cameras and this is the thing you have to build small computers and small cameras and you have to do microscopic electrical electrical engineering to accomplish this as you get smaller it's like a science there's a science to getting smaller that incorporates a bunch of things from your um, from your fleet from your army if you will and the reason why that's so important is like you can like now you can start building like like you take the particleizer that they spent billions of dollars on and it's kilometers long you know what I mean they don't recognize that particles are microscopic but that particle just blew through you know 10,000 galaxies and it only traveled an inch you know, the fact that you need to, you know, shoot this electron through, you know, kilometers worth of galaxies is like a fundamental misunderstanding on your point. Because you can build these particleizers micro small. You know what I mean? And even micro small ones are even more likely to work better. And as far as understanding how far this particle traveled, because, you know, shooting a particle through 10,000 galaxies and trying to ascertain something through it as a port of as opposed to shaking earth into Mars or something like that and trying to ascertain something in from it, you actually get a lot more from the shorter, you know, the when you start just in, impacting the par par particle on a small level, like you're just able to barely impact the particle, you start to understand a lot more of what it takes to impact a particle and what sort of impact you're having on the particle, you know? And, um, but you can build like atomic reactors, you can build planes, you can build tanks, you can build spaceships. That's the thing, my school has the intellectual property to all these products. Like I have tanks, spaceships, planes, you know, atomic reactors, all types of stuff that you're allowed to just press a button and build, you know, when you get my Micro Machine Head uh, game. It's, yeah, I turned it into a game for kids and we play war and stuff with it. It's pretty, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, you don't want to, the bigger ones are the funner ones because you can see it live, but you can go so microscopic that you can only see it on TV, right? You can only see it with microscopic cameras and see it on TV, right? So, but um, as far as microscopic robots, there's always microscopic robots. It's about building the world that built other robots. And another thing that I did with building this world that built other robots was I like gave these robots personalities and I gave them like scripts, like these robots would cook each other dinner and they'd tell each other stories and stuff and they'd have names and they'd have characters and someday God beyond, a God bigger than the God that takes care of us is going to give these robots a soul. These robots are going to be the real people that I made them out to be or whatever. So I really treated these robots, I gave them the same sort of like machine head triggers and the machine head structures that we have where we go through things and you know we're triggered to do this and you know, now we're going to check our chemicals, or our emotional chemicals, and then we're going to, you know, put forward an action that's going to be like this, exactly. So I, like, really deconstructed the construct of our 
AI of our machine head being of our multi machine head because there's multiple machine heads doing this right and and I put together a construct out of it so I put together like this advanced my AI like how one of how people react like one of the things that I have is a fake world with everybody in the world in it or not everybody in the world and probably there's an everybody in the world in it but like uh, I have a bunch of transparent companies and everybody has a virtual person representing them in a virtual world and we get to see everywhere this person walks we get to see what this person writes on his piece of paper what this person types into his computer what this person is doing in the business and everything you know we get to see everything and what I realized is like from my socio sociological studies I guess or from my sociological collection that I put together of my you know my observations I put together a sociological collection one thing I did was have all these people working together and doing all these things and triggering all these things in their AI to solve all these problems you know what we do is we, we just permutate the things and we try to solve different problems you know we try to build a you're building a calculator we'll build a pink one and a blue one and a yellow one and a soft one and a hard one we'll build all these permutations of the calculator as a part of finding the best calculator right so um, one of the things that I did was like take a group of people and like let's introduce the concept like see this group of people is doing all this stuff and they're creating these concepts in the air these concepts in the air are popping up about what they're doing like what if we added a concept like love and that turned all all these people's emotional colors different colors and they acted in different ways and you know we got different results on the end or what else if we did you know sensibility or you know even ignorance what if we did ignorance how would that affect this situation try to come up with you know a realistic result and the thing is is that we have a whole bunch of different people building these AIs so like this guy's got his version and his observations, that guy's got his version and his observations, this guy's got that version and his observations, and we can test them against real life. We can test these constructs, these virtuals against real life. And what we can do is we can put together a collection of the best answers and mix our AIs together. So you take a situation where you guys all predicted and then you, you know, then you have the situation in real life and you compare what happened in your construct to what happened in real life and you take you know the best answer at each of the points in time at each of the pinpoints each of the joints down the tree of the tree of what happened um, you take the best results from each of the AIs and slowly and so slowly but surely you put together a better AI an AI that's more accurate and more relevant to real life so the other thing was is that I've got this school that I keep on talking about the school is initially built with the idea that, like, say I was learning math polynomials, I wanted a list of every prerequisite that I needed to learn math polynomials, and I wanted a list of everything that you can do with pol polynomials, then I wanted a list of everything that polynomials leads to, or re that requires polynomials as a prerequisite. So I wanted, like, the beginning to the very highest tech, highest under scientific understanding, highest public understanding of any subject any subject to the most specific nature to the most specific nature where you can go from zero to the top as fast as you want and the idea was, was that that's all you had to study if you didn't want to study English and you didn't want to study social and you just wanted to study polynomials and be our polynomial master that you could do that or if you wanted like see where polynomials takes because you like kept the calculus on the other end of polynomials you, there you go way on your journey to the very top of calculus right so um, that's how the school was built and then I started adding things like companies and started adding things like intellectual property where we all share intellectual property see the thing is is that I let you own your intellectual property if you work for me you own your intellectual property but you're just forced to share it with me you're just forced to share it with me and I share it with everybody that shares it with me so if you share your intellectual property you share it with me so we put together this intellectual property share and we all get to work together. We all get to tell everybody each other's secrets, you know, and be on the cutting edge of somebody else's cutting edge. And then I come up with an idea, then they come up with an idea, then they come up with an idea, then another idea is come up with. It works way more fast than the redundancy of competitiveness. Working together is like capitalism is slow. It's just slow compared to working together and telling everybody everyone's secrets and stuff like that. That's why it's, that's why this system actually is so popular because it betters capitalism in production and 
um, results. Oh, time's out.